it's the most reliable indicator we have of what the outcomes will be in children who are just starting on treatment. And it's also one of the markers that we now use uh, to identify ch children with increased bulk of residual disease who are not responding to the initial treatment. And many of, these will many of these patients will benefit from intensification after that phase. MRD changes the outcomes of patients in two ways. We know that uh, ALL is a heterogeneous disease. Some patients are very chemosensitive and require much less treatment. And some people, some children have more chemoresistant disease and benefit from more intensive treatment all the way to some patients actually benefiting from transplantation. By using MRD, we can identify low-risk patients, give them much less intensified treatment, less times in hospital, less toxicities, um, and a much better quality of life, and identify the really high-risk patients who will benefit not only from more intensified therapy, transplantation, and this era now from novel targeted therapy before the disease actually comes back. MRD alone isn't enough. So the first question you've got really is that, okay, you treat a child or a patient and then you measure the disease. And then you say, oh, okay, they didn't respond as well as we would have liked them to do. But can you predict that from the beginning? In which case you could come in with more correct chemotherapy right from the beginning. So what, what determines this MRD? We have some clues. Uh, we know that Older children are more likely to be MRD positive, so age is a factor. But we think more likely the genetics of the leukemia itself is, is actually determining what this MRD and what this residual disease is. So therefore newer therapies that target these genetic uh, changes may also be effective.